Okay, welcome back, Odoers. My name is Jose Ignacio. So today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use scheduled actions to automatically run important tasks for us inside of the subscriptions app. So scheduled actions are custom processes that can be set up in your Odoo database to complete tasks automatically. So according to a set schedule or a number of other repetitions as well. Scheduled actions themselves are particularly powerful inside of the subscriptions app because subscriptions often require routine tasks to process. So with that in mind, enough chit chat, let's jump into our database and get those actions scheduled. Before we do anything, we're gonna need to get into developer mode. While some scheduled actions are available without it, many scheduled actions are not enabled by default. Developer mode will give us access to all the scheduled actions that Odoo offers. Developer mode itself can be found inside of our settings application. So we're inside of here right now, but first let's take a quick look at something else. We're gonna set up a quick configuration for the accounting app, which we're gonna need for the scheduled action that we're gonna look at today. So we're actually gonna click on the accounting icon on the left hand side over here. And then once that we're inside of here, we need to take a look at some settings involving the default accounts that we have over here. So here we go, we're finally at our section. So here we need to make sure both the deferred expense, which happens to be right there, as well as the deferred revenue fields are both filled in and both of them have a new field in. This allows the scheduled action we'll be taking a look at today to run properly. Don't worry though, this will be examined more in just a bit. So now let's actually take care of that developer mode. Let's jump back over here to general settings using the left hand side and scroll to the bottom. Down here where it says developer tools, you wanna to click activate the developer mode. And once you do that, we're all set and ready to go. Okay, now that that's taken care of, let's start looking at our scheduled actions. So we can find them by heading back to the settings app once again, and see up here at the top, something new has appeared. Click on the word technical right there. And then you wanna scroll down until you reach the section that basically lets us do automations. And there we go. So there we have it. And we're gonna select, I said it before, scheduled actions. So here we see a full list of all the scheduled actions in our database for all of our applications. We can also see some basic info about our automations at a quick glance here as well if we wanted to, such as the names, what they do and everything. We can see each scheduled actions priority as well as you could tell. We can see things like when it's actually supposed to be intervals. Wow, there's a lot of cool stuff right there, including the next execution dates with live timestamps and everything else. And if they're active or if they're not active. And all of that is going to be something that I'm going to go over in just a quick second. So I think it's time for us to take a look at one of the scheduled actions that comes configured for us inside of our subscriptions app. And we're going to see how a scheduled action works there. So inside of the search bar up at the top, we're going to type in the word subscription, aptly so. And that's going to show us every action related to the subscriptions app. And would you look at that? Here's one that looks pretty good. Generate recurring invoices and payments. That sounds pretty useful. This handy action generates recurring invoices and payments on all of our subscriptions at the end of each day. This is why we set up our deferred expenses and revenues in the accounting setting earlier so that Odoo can generate and process recurring invoices and payments. Let's click into here to see how this one works right there. So from this page, we can actually see all the settings we need for our scheduled action to run. First off, we have the name field, which happens to be at the very top, and we can identify what the action does and where it does it. So moving on inside of our technical settings, we can start by setting over here our model. You can think of a model as a table of information. This includes apps like the subscriptions app. It can also include things like sales orders, bank accounts, and much more. It's pretty cool. So since this scheduled action targets sales orders, we're gonna make sure the model is set to sales order, which it happens to be. Now moving on, we have over here our allowed groups. It's used to set restrictions on who can run this action. We want this action to be executed by anyone in our database, so we're gonna actually leave that blank as it is. And then if you have Odoo's website app installed, you'll get an extra setting in this section called available on the website. This allows the scheduled action to be run on the website using a dedicated controller. We don't need that for this action though, so we're gonna leave that blank right now. And then up next over here, we have action details. This whole section right here, has all of our settings for how and when the action is being run. The scheduled user is the user that runs the action automatically in your database. By default, you'll get the always helpful internal Odoo bot as an option here. This helps us attribute an action to the system rather than a real user. This works for us, so we're just gonna leave that setting alone as well. 
Up next, we have execute every blank field. And this is used to tell Odoo how often to schedule this action. Right now, we have it set to run every three days. However, here at Stealthywood, we've been swamped with orders lately. So let's change this to run every day, which means run every one day. Perfect. And making sure as well that the period of time in the adjacent field is set to days as well, because you can change that if you would like to. The action slider that we actually have right, active, right below that, active, I said action, active slider, swallow doopsy, can't read today. So this is the same active status that we saw in the list of actions earlier. Inactive means it's not being run. Active means it's being run. It's that simple. So if you ever want to stop an action from running, you can always switch this slider over there and make it inactive. But we want this action to run on schedule, so we're going to leave that inside of active. So we're not going to touch that. So next execution date tells us when this action will run next. Another way to skip a scheduled action is actually to change the date here until you want it to run next. Then Odoo will skip running the action until the specified date and time. We can also set a limit on how many times we want this action to run with the number of calls field below. Setting it to zero will cause it to not run, while any positive number will cause the action to stop scheduling after that number of times. We want this action to run indefinitely, so we're going to make sure that we have it set to a negative one, because any negative number will cause the action to not have a limit, which is a positive, even though we're typing in negatives. And then finally, we happen to have a priority field. It's used to set the priority of the scheduled action. Here, a zero is considered the highest priority, while a 10 is the lowest. Because all of these new orders, I want to make sure that this action has priority over others that might run at the same time. So I'm actually going to change this to the number three right there. And then the final thing to do for actual scheduled action is set the code it'll run. Now, this part is a pretty advanced topic, so we won't be getting into exactly how that works in this video. However, we can click on this help tab if we wanted to, and it's going to give us a whole plethora of information that we might want to know for variables that we can use inside of our code. For more information on setting up code, we've also included a link to our docs. For now, we can just leave the code as is. Now we're actually going to go back up to the top of this page, and we're going to click Run Manually just because we want to run this manually. Or if we're done, we can simply go about our business as usual and the action will run on the next execution date. And that's all it takes, oh doers. You set up a scheduled action to get your database automated and working for you, the viewer. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.